A Rockford man is found dead in Chicago. Now a woman is charged with his murder. Investigators work to find a connection between the two. Plus, remembering the victims of last week's brutal attacks in Rockford. Friends and loved ones prepared to say their final goodbyes. And the history of Rockford Speedway now lives on at a state line museum. The facade telling the story of decades of races. Live from WTVO 17, this is Eyewitness News at 5. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. A woman is arrested and charged in the murder of a Rockford man. Cristoforo Osario Gonzalez was last seen working at 21st Auto Sales on February 9th. The owner of the car lot said he was taking a man and woman on a test drive and never returned. His body was later found in Chicago. Gonzalez had been shot in the head. His wrists showed marks consistent with being zip tied. Rosie Chavez is charged with kidnapping and first degree murder. Police say the 38 year old Chicago area woman is the woman who went on that test drive. They also say video shows Chavez along with another person dumping Gonzalez's body out of the trunk of the car. His body was found in an alley in Chicago the next day. Right now, it's not known if the two knew each other or a motive in the murder. Friends, family and community members lined the streets of Sycamore today to pay respects to a law enforcement officer. DeKalb County Sheriff's Deputy Christina Musil was killed Thursday night when a truck rear-ended her squad car south of DeKalb. A procession today started at the sheriff's office going down Route 64 to the coroner's office. The 35-year-old had been with the department for five years. She also served in Iraq with the Army, then was a military police officer in the National Guard. Muso leaves behind three young children. This week, the four people killed in deadly attacks in Rockford will be laid to rest. The visitation for mail carrier Jay Larson will be tomorrow. A prayer is scheduled at 7.15 p.m. at Fitzgerald Funeral Home. A funeral mass is Wednesday at 11 a.m. at the Cathedral of St. Peter. According to his obituary, in lieu of flowers and gifts, memorials can be made to the Boys and Girls Club of Rockford or Poor Claire Sisters in Larson's name. The memorial visitation for the youngest victim, 15-year-old Jenna Newcomb, is Friday. It's set for 1 until 4 at Maywood Evangelical Free Church on Samuelson. The family is planning a private funeral at a later date. The family requests in lieu of flowers for people to donate to a fund they're going to establish to support East High School's softball, dance and theater programs. The visitation for mother and son Jacob and Ramona Schubach is also Friday. According to their obituaries, the visitation will be from 4 until 8 at Cross Point Church on East State Street in Rockford with a memorial service the next morning at the church. The man charged in Wednesday's brutal attacks will be back in court tomorrow. Christian Soto made his first appearance in a Winnebago County courtroom on Thursday. He's facing four counts of first degree murder, seven counts of attempted murder and two counts of home invasion. In just a few hours, a Winnebago County man who spent years in prison for a crime he didn't commit will learn if he'll be awarded millions of dollars. Alan Beeman was convicted of murdering his ex-girlfriend in Normal in 1992. But in 2008, the Illinois Supreme Court granted him a certificate of innocence. Then Governor Pat Quinn later pardoned Beeman. Beeman sued the town for malicious prosecution, conspiracy and intentional infliction of emotional distress. The Normal Town Council will discuss a $5.4 million settlement at their meeting tonight. That starts at 7. Governor J.B. Pritzker says domestic violence training will be enhanced for prisoner review board members. Two board members stepped down after granting Crescetti brand parole. Police say he then killed 11-year-old Jaden Perkins and stabbed his pregnant mother. She had an order of protection against brand. Court officials say brand threatened her and her family, so she contacted the review board and brand was taken back into custody. But he was later released and granted parole on March 12th. The panel didn't take into consideration enough the domestic violence history of this particular prisoner um, and the fact that there were reports uh, by the victim of that person being knocking on her door, being around her apartment building, etc. Brand is charged with Jaden's murder. He's also facing other charges. UPS is about to become the new primary air cargo provider for the U.S. Postal Service. FedEx had the role for more than 20 years, but it's letting that contract go because it's not making as much money as it used to. 
One trade publication says about 300 FedEx pilots could be out of work because of this. The Postal Service was the largest customer for FedEx Air-Based Express segment. But now UPS will handle the Postal Service's priority mail and other quick services. The Rockford Speedway has had its last lap, and now the Forest Hills Lodge next door is being reinvented. But the nostalgia of the Speedway will remain inside a Stateline Museum. Drea Baroni joins us now with more on this story. Yeah, Mimi, the museum is giving new life to the recently demolished Forest Hills Lodge. The facade that stood next door to the Rockford Speedway for decades has become frontier land. Using the worn and wooden exterior of the lodge, the historic auto attractions created a western town right here in the state line. I went over and checked out the Roscoe Museum today and talked to the museum's director, Alex Mary, about the feedback she's already gotten. They would come back here and say, oh wow, I, I saw that sign at the Rockford Speedway, at the Forest Hill Lodge, I saw that. And that's what I want to see. That's what I want to continue to see as people, as Rockfordians come in, as residents around the state line come in, they make that connection to Rockford Speedway and it's right here in Roscoe. Alex also told me the museum's owner, Wayne Lensing, was a close friend of the Speedway's owner and he wanted to honor and preserve the building as much as possible. I'll have more on that interactive parts of the museum coming up at 6. Mimi. All right, thanks, Drea. Next month, you can own a part of racing history. Rockford Speedway will be selling memorabilia and equipment in an online auction. Speedway officials say grandstands, scoreboards, signage, entire buildings and more will be available to the highest bidder. The auction opens May 27th and closes June 3rd. Congratulations are in order for some state line kids. One of the state line robotics teams won the Midwest Regional and is heading to the World Championships. State line robotics is the first robotics team of Hananiga High School. Over the weekend, Team 4655 took first place at a competition in Chicago. Now the team is headed to the World Championships later this month in Houston. They're currently looking for sponsors to help get them there. We have more information on our website, mystateline.com. Don't text and drive. It's a new campaign to keep people off their phones coming up. The message to drivers from the father of a girl killed in a distracted driving crash. And we've got some rain showers that will stay with us here throughout the day today and even going into tomorrow, but eventually a mix and a transition over to snow will be possible. This is not an April Fool's joke. We've got the potential for some accumulating snowfall later this week and look at when to expect that. Coming up in First Warn Forecast a little later. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is urging drivers to put down the phone when behind the wheel. Washington correspondent Maddie Beer Temple reports on the new campaign aimed at saving lives. This is a face of distracted driving. Joel Feldman lost his 21-year-old daughter Casey in 2009. A man who made a choice to take his eyes off the road, reach for his GPS, he rolled through a stop sign, he hit Casey. Said, Feldman shares Casey's story in hopes that others don't go through the same thing. No parent should ever have to bury a child. Feldman supports the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration's new campaign, Put the Phone Away or Pay. Now through April 8th, you'll see these ads on TV, radio, and online platforms in English and Spanish. Enough with the phones already. Just put them down. The $5 million campaign replaces the previous You Drive, You Text, You Pay slogan. NHTSA wants to acknowledge that it's more than just texts that are distracting drivers. There are apps for many different things now, so we think that put the phone away and pay is a much more broad message. In addition to the ads, this week more police officers will be on the roads enforcing state distracted driving laws. Baltimore County, Maryland Police Chief Robert McCullough says officers are not just pulling people over, but trying to educate drivers. Too. Distracted driving pamphlets are also handed out at these traffic stops. NHTSA says their efforts seem to be working. Preliminary 2023 data shows a 3.6 percent decline in traffic crash fatalities from the year before. But despite overall declines, NHTSA says there has been an increase in pedestrian deaths. Reporting in Washington, I'm Maddie Beer Temple. Rain showers are moving through the state line coming up. Some areas could see storms later tonight. Candace is tracking that, plus the potential for snow later this week. Now, 
your first worn weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Well, I know we have been dealing with the cloud cover and the rain showers and a few thunderstorms here for the past 24 hours. But first, before we get into more rain and snow, I have to give a big shout out to the uh, Skyrise Apartment ladies there, the coloring group. Every Monday they get together. They invited me to come color some springtime pictures with them earlier today and made me this. So I have to say a big thank you because how would you not be up, uh, uplifted when you see the butterfly and the flowers, right? April showers bring May flowers. Well, we've got a lot of rain coming up and we have had a lot of rain, but ladies, thank you so much for that. It was a good time here this afternoon and nice to color some bright pictures on a cloudy and kind of rainy day. And we've got that out there this afternoon. You can see the rain showers coming down as we take a live look with our SkyTrack camera out of the Poplar Grove Airport. Now we've got more rain, a few thunderstorms, severe threat limited for us here throughout this late afternoon and evening, but we are going to have some periods of some brief downpours as the rain showers come through. Some of the stronger cores may contain some smaller hail and maybe even some gusty winds that'll carry over unfortunately into tomorrow but then we get this transition over to some snowfall late tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening and that'll carry over into Wednesday where we could see some accumulations from that 43 our current temperature here in Rockford the wind from the east northeast it's got a little bite to it makes it feel more like 37 our pressure has been holding steady but that pressure is going to rapidly drop over the next 24 hours as a strong low pressure system moves through 43 right now now in Rockford, 42 in Freeport, 43 in Rochelle. We're 42 right now in DeKalb, but that wind chill makes it again feel more like the 30s. 42 for our weather watcher Terry down in Genoa. We've received just a little over a tenth of an inch of rain so far for today down there in northern DeKalb County. Any stronger thunderstorm activity going to stay down to the south of us, but you see some thunderstorms beginning to develop here along Interstate 80 and then back out through southeast Iowa. These will kind of come close to southern Whiteside, Lee, and DeKalb counties, and again, that's where we may see some smaller hail and maybe some gusty winds, but it's just the scattered rain and the heavy downpours uh, kind of picking up a little more in coverage as we get a little further into the evening. All of this is tied into a pretty significant storm system, and you can tell just by looking at our temperatures where that warm front sits. So we've got this easterly wind, southerly wind. Look at that, 81 right now in St. Louis while we are stuck in the 40s. That front actually stays to the south here over over the next 24 to 36 hours. So that's where a lot of the active weather is going to stay. We are on the colder side and actually get some colder air wrapping in on the back side of that tomorrow. So 38, that's where we'll head for the night tonight. Our wind will actually pick up tonight going into tomorrow. Temperatures tomorrow likely in the 40s to start us off with, but then they'll drop through the 30s as we head into tomorrow afternoon. So let's plan this out on future casts. Notice we hold on to that easterly wind, some heavier rainfall there to the south. We may see a little break early tomorrow and then scatter rain showers and a few isolated thunderstorms will pick back up with that. As that colder air wraps in, here's the transition over so that late afternoon evening commute, we've got a transition over to some snow. That'll change over to all snow overnight Tuesday as that colder air comes in and this will be a heavier snow. Notice our temperatures are in the lower 30s so there will be some slushy accumulations right now on grassy and elevated surfaces but could be a little slick there for the Wednesday morning commute and then we'll see some of that mixed back in with some rain showers once we do get into uh, Wednesday afternoon as temperatures warm up. So kind of a messy midweek will dry out a little bit towards the end of the week. Notice our temperatures will stay on the cooler side as a result of that. Come overnight lows down into the 20s. 46 there on Thursday. We'll see a return of some sunshine, but it comes with a little wind there on Friday. Could see some fog Friday night into Saturday, but then I think we'll warm back up as we head into next week. Yes, we'll just focus on the end of that forecast. Thanks, Candace. Scouts in next with sports. The Cubs are feeling very good about one of their new pitchers following his debut today at Wrigley Field. Now sports with sports director Scott Lever. One of the biggest keys for the Cubs this season will be starting pitcher Shota Imanaga. How good will he be? Will he be a solid number three or four in the rotation? Or will he be better than that? Well, today at Wrigley, he pitched like an ace. He was mowing down the Rockies. Here he's going to get Brenton Doyle looking at strike three. Then he'll get Nolan Jones looking at strike three. Next, it's Chris Bryant, the Chris Bryant, who gets punched out swinging. Imanaga had six strikeouts in the first four innings, and he had a no-hitter going with two outs in the sixth. 
But Charlie Blackman broke that up with that single. Fans were showing their appreciation for Iman, Imanaga's outing. He pitched six shutout innings and had nine strikeouts. This game was scoreless until the bottom of the sixth. Christopher Morell then hitting a hard grounder through the infield with two on. Nolan Jones in the left had that ball go right under his glove for a huge error. That allowed the two runners to score, and Morell circled the bases to score as well. And then later, it's Cody Bellinger who wraps a single. This was in the seventh inning. That scored two more. Cubs went on to win this game by the final score of 5 to nothing. Today's win only adds to the optimism the Cubs have for this season. They're especially enthused about Imanaga. I can't give you the secrets because then everybody will know. Uh, he just, he really knows, he knows what he's doing. Uh, he's obviously got a unique kind of like profile in terms of just how he throws and how the ball moves. So uh, it's a little bit deceptive uh, for most people. His last start I had a pretty good view once, once I was taken out and the stuff is, is really good. And um, so I'm, I'm excited. Well, the White Sox lost to the Braves 9 to nothing in a game called after eight innings by rain. The Sox through four games now and scored a total of eight runs. The White Sox are bringing back Mike Clevenger. They're signing him to a one-year contract to help out in the rotation now that Dylan Cease is gone. The transfer portal could take away a key player from the Fighting Illini's basketball program. 6'9 junior Dane Danger has entered the portal. Danger averaged just over six points and three and a half rebounds a game this season. He gave the Illini a physical presence inside. And former fight Illini and NFL defensive back Monte Davis is dead at age 35. Police officers responded to a medical call at his residence in South Florida this morning and found his body. Police say there doesn't appear to be foul play involved. Davis played in the NFL with the Colts, Dolphins, and Bills, and he made two Pro Bowls. At Sports, we'll be right back. Our first warning interactive radar brought to us by Rockford Glass and more. We've had some rain and some thunderstorms come through and that trend will continue. A couple of breaks here and there. We'll see a scattered shower, isolated thunderstorm, limited in the way of severe weather. However, some small hail gusty winds will be possible with some of the stronger storms. Look for rain transitioning over to snow late tomorrow afternoon. All right. Thanks, Candace. And thanks for watching. We'll see you at six.